Great. Thank you, Sean. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to I'd like to call to order the City of South Pasadena Library Board of Trustees regular meeting for Thursday, July 13th, 2023. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yes, you may. Uh, Sean, could you do roll call, please? Sure. Dean Serwin? Present. Bianca Richards? Present. Annie Chang Long? Here. Kenneth Gross? Here. Edward Pearson? Here. Thank you. And uh, I'll note that Council Member Janet Braun is here. Uh, next, have our uh, public comment. Um, are we here to have several people? Or is it just? Sean, is there anyone on Zoom for public comment? No. Um, so I believe we only have one comment, public commenter. It's Sally Kilby. Yes. Okay. I'm Sally Kilby. I think I know most of you. And I have three things. Um, I just want to let you know, and I let uh, the friend president know. So I did public comment at the uh, budget meeting on 621. And um, just to let you know, I um, was encouraging them to adopt the budget, which had the 150000 from the general fund reserved for the uh, master plan study. And I just said that we, um, I was a former chair of the Friends of the Library 20th Century uh, Committee, and one of the members, and to help raise funds for major capital improvements. And that we had, in fact, evaluated the teen room and upgrading that much needed. But we realized that we didn't know the big picture what was going to happen with the library, um, the future of the facility with so many infrastructure issues. So I just asked them to. Uh, include the 150000 in the budget, and it was approved uh, four to one. And the second is during the 4th of July, I overheard the chair talking to a uh, board uh, trustee over at the Senior Center Foundation, and he mentioned that he has a 10 year plan to not just renovate or rebuild the library, but to make a community center of this whole beautiful facility. And I was thrilled to hear that. And I just want you to know that I do support that and I'd be happy to work with you for the next 10 years on that. And um, the third thing is passing out some flyers. Um, you may know that uh, Ellen Daigle and myself are senior champions and we're having being awarded at a very nice wine and cheese and dessert event in August. And we'd love you to come and to raise awareness of the senior center and the need. The foundation has been able to expand uh, a room there with technology, put in computers when the city wasn't going to be able to replace the computers. So that's where the money comes from this foundation. I know you know about it. <laughs> And that's it. Thank you, Thank you. Dolly. Uh, I would note that uh, plan might be a strong word. Uh, intention, <laughs> desire. Uh, so with that, uh, we have the recommendation to uh, approve the minutes of the June 8th regular meeting. Does anyone have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, agenda? I move to approve uh, the meeting of June 8th, 2020. I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Sorry. Aye. I have seen, because I wasn't present for that meeting. Do, do I do that like that? <laughs> you can vote for it, but you can abstain. Oh, if I can abstain. Anyone opposed? Okay, that's it. So what was the vote? Did, were there any abstentions? There was one abstention. Okay. All right, let's on moment. And uh, otherwise passed uh, unanimously uh, aside from the extension. Item three on the agenda, library administrative policy manual update. Uh, for those of you who uh, made it, uh, well, you all were all here over the last few months when we devised our plan of what we're going to do next year and what our accomplishments were from last year. We uh, managed to review and uh, act upon seven of the, I believe seven of the policies, five, mm -hmm. okay, five of the policies 
Um, and uh, we're going to continue that until we're done. So this year, uh, we're starting uh, again. Uh, the recommendation is per the direction provided by the board on June 8th. It's recommended that the board adopt the revised procedures for patrons exhibiting disruptive behavior policy, rename the disruptive patron behavior policy, uh, and with the understanding that written procedures for managing and interacting with disruptive patrons are included in the library procedures manual. Uh, I believe that we would, if anyone has any comments or thoughts before we move to a vote. I just have one thing. In, in the language, it simply says situations that involve disruptive patients, patrons are managed by staff in accordance with the guidelines included in the library procedures manual. Should we reference the section? Of the manual? I think not because those can change. Yeah. The number okay. can change. Okay. I think we just wanted we to. We have to amend that repeatedly every yeah. time. Yeah. 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 It's an excellent idea, though. Um, with that, if no one else has anything, um, I'd, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, adopt the procedure. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Pa pardon me, who was the second? Me, uh, Kenny. Thank you, Kenny. I don't think we need a voice vote for any of these, do we, Sean? No. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to item four, online resource report, canopy film streaming service. So because we had a pretty light agenda, I thought I would just take uh, the time to kind of maybe highlight resources that we have in the library so you would learn a little bit more. Um, yeah, so this is Canopy. This is a film streaming service that we have been um, working with since um, 2018. They have more than 30,000 titles, really great uh, selection. It's a pay per use service. So when a person chooses to watch a film, we pay for that viewing. It's um, $2 per film and for a great courses, if you wanna view great courses, which is like 25 hours of material, it's $5. And children too, for the children's content, it's basically $5 for the whole month. And we limit the number of plays that our customers can have because of the cost and it's pay per use. And, you know, we that can obviously get um, beyond what we can afford if it's if the play, if the number of plays we allow are, is too high. What's the limit? Uh, five a month. Five a month mm -hmm. per page per card holder. Per card holder. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to give you a sense of kind of. Uh, the popularity of this. On the back side, you can see that it really, um, usage really jumped with COVID and kind of stayed high, has sort of stayed at that higher rate. Um, people learned it existed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, which is great. I mean, it's great that um, people are viewing it. So um, if you look at the statistics, uh, 65,000 visits, that means um, that's the number of like website visits. Um, the number of pages visited is, you know, so someone went to multiple pages when they were on the site. Um, 12,881 plays uh, were played, according to their statistics, which doesn't really match our costs, but that's, I don't know how they're counting it. Um, and then we have 1,865 separate users signed up. So out of all of our cardholders and all of our residents, it's a fairly small percentage of cardholders. Um, not that small, but um, 1,800 people are using this service. Um, and then there's just some information about kind of um, the, the types of films um, that people are watching by subject matter. Do you know what Kino, Kino Lober, uh, what do they publish? I wonder their Lober Productions, uh, the TV shows years ago, I think has something to do with that. Well, I noticed that you know they're the second most IFC. Interestingly, is the the top. So people are looking for a reasonable quality product. I, my my presumption, Kathy, would be that the cost versus plays analysis is because you said it's five dollars a month for the children. So considering that half of our users are children, uh, probably is somewhere in there. Was it? But but I mean the the library pays for it. It's five uses per cardholder. Mm -hmm. And but but they don't pay for it. The library pays for it. Correct. Okay. But can they go over and they pay for it? Because the math doesn't add up. Well, that's what no, it doesn't here. add up. So yeah. I would have to ask them. Yeah. You know what they're counting. Um, you know they. I, I 
yeah, I don't know why, if our total cost that we, well, I guess maybe it has to do with this. So the way that we pay them is that we uh, basically put money on account with Canopy. So the amount that's showing here is total cost for the year. That's the money that we put into our Canopy account during the year. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean but we spent more because there was already a balance in the account. So to get the actual cost of you know the number of plays in the year, I would have to probably ask them if they could give okay. me that. Or I could I could pull the data. And you, it, like I said, you, oh, I'm sorry. you said that children pay uh, five dollars per month, right. not per play. So they might watch, they might play 150 times in a month. Yeah. Because kids watch the same thing over okay. and over yeah. and over and over. Right, right, right. So it, that that would more than likely account for that. This is this is an excellent service. I did not realize that we had. I think it's wonderful that we can provide that for people who don't subscribe to streaming services or want to watch product that is not available on the typical streaming service. Yeah, the people who know about it um, are big fans and really love it. Um, and it's fun to see the variety and people are really exploring a lot of different things, foreign films, learning. Again, the Great Courses is like the sixth most used uh, resource, so that's great. I didn't know about it either. How do we advertise it? Or where? how do you even log do it? Like, do you go to the website? Um, yeah, you go to our our website under online resources mm -hmm. and you click film streaming and it tells you how to get signed up. We also have a YouTube tutorial. For you how have to watch it. on your computer though. Um, no, you yeah. can do it on, they have an app. You can do it on your computer. You can use your Roku or your Apple oh. TV or whatever okay. to cast it onto your onto your TV. Um, and the librarians at the desk can help you get started if you're having any trouble. Do we have flyers about it or anything? We do have flyers. We um, mostly pass them out uh, when someone's expressing an interest in that kind of thing. Again, the cost is right. prohibitive, right. and so we don't advertise it. I mean, we do. I mean, we put it on our social media, and we bring it up once in a while. We, we, we don't push it. Yeah, we're not oh, okay. pushing it really hard like we would something else that's not a pay per use. Do we still have shelves of DVDs and so forth? Yeah. Okay. So people who. Yeah, yeah we still have a lot I don't know how to scream. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, the Friends, um, the last two years, the budget has included funds for Great Courses uh, DVD sets because those hadn't been circulating for a number of years. So we did uh, weed a lot of those out, but um, with the Friends money, we've been able to buy some newer, more recently published Great Courses titles on physical DVD. Um, so those are seem to be circulating, the newer ones. Do we, is there a way to promote those? Because I would presume, and, and I'm making a hasty generalization here, but that, um, Older customers might be more interested in great courses, and older customers might be more uh, interested in using traditional media as yeah. opposed to online. Yes, and that's part of the reason that we asked the friends for the money because I felt that we needed to have some selection in the library for people who are not going to use this technology. Maybe we could promote it within the senior center. Yeah, we could do that. Excellent. Well, thank you for bringing that to our uh, attention. Uh, Unless there's anything else, item five, the special tax administration for fiscal year 2023-2024. Yeah, I just wanted to let you know that the um, CPIU uh, number that we use to calculate the tax rate was released on July 12th, and the um, increase this year is 2.542%. So it's very low compared to last year's 8.594%. Um, but still, I mean, you know, it's 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 an increase, not a decrease, <laughs> and it's I suppose good because it means inflation is is better. But it's very different from last year. And I think that when we um, when the finance department and we budgeted uh, for the revenue, I think we were fairly conservative. So we should be okay as far as what we budgeted to expecting to receive and what we actually received. Excellent. That makes sense considering last year was anomalous. Yeah, it's really high. Um, the the tax levy is due to the county on um, August 10th, so we'll make that deadline, and then we, as you know, go to the city council with a report for them to approve. Uh, if you would let us know when that report will be submitted, mm -hmm. we could make an effort to be there wearing our shirts. It's usually on consent, so. 
typically it's just consent item, but yes, I will let you know. Thank you. Uh, if nothing else on that, item six, the trustees fiscal year 2023-2024 work plan status review. I thought that we would, as you asked for in the past, to have these on the agenda as a regular item so we can touch base and just talk through each one and decide where we are and what we need to do. So as far as policy review, um, we will have at least one policy for the August meeting. Um, I thought we could talk a little bit about the library visits and uh, people's availability and when they would prefer to do that so that we can actually start to put together a little bit of a schedule. Um, so if, if we want to go on that discussion now, that I would, would be I would helpful. love to. I was thinking about that earlier today and realized that I probably should have notified you that I wanted to put it on the agenda. Uh, and you already did. So thank you. Um, I think that it would be very worthwhile that the next item is that we're going to essentially be ambassadors to the community regarding the desire they need for a, a probably new building as opposed to a simply putting band-aids on. Uh, that's what the master site plan that Sally mentioned uh, that we had budgeted for uh, is about. Oddly enough, I discussed with someone that I thought was a slam dunk. Yes, I am dead set on board with rebuilding. It was someone, I won't name names, but who um, we gave an award to as a volunteer and who said, no, we don't need a new library. We have a perfectly good library. So I think that that's something that we might find in the community. And I think that having um, visited uh, various sites around uh, the Southern California area, that have recently uh, updated and or built new facilities, I'd like to uh, see libraries and civic centers. Um, I think that Cerritos would be an excellent civic center to build into. Um, and I would like to also put on an agenda or, or a travel agenda to go and meet with uh, San Marino, uh, as well as Aunt Alhambra, because San Marino just did their new library and Alhambra just got a ton of money from the state to build a civic center. Um, yes, and we can either go there or I can ask uh, those directors to come to a board meeting. I should think and to us, that'd be lovely. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, we may want to see those libraries, but yeah. I also envisioned having some folks come and maybe talk a little bit about their experiences. Altadena is another one mm -hmm. um, that's way further along in their process than we are. So I, I would love it if we could get those, you know, August is probably too soon, but September, October, November. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'd really like to get a jump on that because I think that uh, the, you know, understand us all understanding in a very steadfast way what best practices are and not just having people tell us what the best practices are, but actually seeing them in practice in new libraries and what they've done in addition to traditional library, because I think that's going to be part of the sale of this, is that we we could patch this library if we want it to be a traditional library as opposed to a library for the next 50 years. If we want a library for the last 50 years, we could put band-aids. Where, where do we stand in relation to other area libraries in a broad area as far as age, um, Renovation. Excellent question. Is that something staff could put together a chart for us? Um, the state library uh, did that study in kind of advance of the funding that came out for the infrastructure um, because they were trying to demonstrate to the governor and to the state that there was a great need. So yes, there is on the state library's page information about age. So I can share that with you guys via email after this meeting. We're, we're old. Yeah, we're pretty old. I think that does what I say. Relatively. Um, uh, and and one, one point that I think is worth mentioning often is that the library that we currently use as a library is not a historical yes. building. Yes. It is the community room that is a historical building. And I, I, I think it'd be great if we could get confirmation on this. But as I understand it, it's only three walls of the community room that are historical. The fourth wall, the one that the library shares, I believe is not. Um, I believe that it, I mean, it is part of the original. Oh, it is. It is. Um, it, that is, and, and the arches that are mm -hmm. outside on each balcony are are from that. 
Okay, so it would be really great to know what we, and I think that's important for the master site, whether it's a library or a civic center, what footprint must be incorporated. Right, and I think that's part of the master planning responsibilities that, you know, they they find all that out and document it in your master plan so that you know you can do this, you can't do this. Um, so that will be that will be explored for sure. Do we know a time frame on that? Uh, the city manager uh, would like us to uh, have a staff meeting in August to kind of get started. So she's thinking August is when we would first kind of start having that conversation with Public Works and myself and her. Excellent. Does the library board have uh, an active role in this in any way, shape, or form, or are we just the ambassadors as we've designated ourselves once it's finalized? I think we haven't quite figured out what this process looks like and who's involved. I mean, I was thinking about this just yesterday. Um, you know, there are lots of different people that are going to want to be in the loop. Valley, who's no longer on the Friends. You know, there are people in the community that are going to want to be part of the process. Um, so I think that's part of what we have to talk about with the city manager. Um, I think the objective is to get a scope of work put together for so that we can have somebody do the master plan. And yes, we would get input from you and others, I think, about what that scope entails and what it is that we want to make sure they do. For example, we want to make sure they identify what parts of the community room are historic. You know, so yes, I think that you'll have a, an opportunity to give some um, feedback on that. Probably more likely uh, looking at a, a draft, you know, that we would come up with a draft and then share that with you guys. Okay, excellent. Uh, does anyone have yeah, to Jan, I have a question. Kathy, do you? Because I'm sure they're going to put an RFP out. I'm guessing there'll be an RFP to go out for that person to do the master side plan. Do you have um, firms that you know of that do that? Because that's going to be critical, mm -hmm. picking the right contractor or the right. Yeah, I, I know it, it, early on there was discussion about using um, an on call uh, architect that's in our professional services on call through Public Works. Um, but I've been talking a little bit more about that with Armin A. I feel like with something this important, we should probably do a competitive bid and get the best cast a wider net. Get the best people. And yes, there are there are a number of architects that specialize in mm -hmm. libraries. Okay. And um, you have, you know who those people are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. In fact, one of them, they're gonna stop by and, and just visit the library when they're in town for another meeting just to mm -hmm. kind of see it and so, but we That's people smart. know people are interested. That's and, smart. Yeah, they're welcome to anybody's welcome to come to the library. It's an open public building, but but it, but as we go forward on this, like everybody keeps talking about, like the senior center, a community center, a civic center, a library. I think we need to focus because you know we've got you know this is our space, right. and this is where it's at. Uh, yeah, is is that what we're going to pursue, or is the city looking at the future of a gigantic civic center that's a, that would incorporate other kinds of it's stuff. It's too bad there's not any space relatively close <laughs> to us that <laughs> might be available. <laughs> yeah. Play the lottery. Maybe we'll win the big lottery. <laughs> um, Instead of super cat butter. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we can't move forward without that yeah. plan. And so that's, I think, in August when we kind of have a little internal kickoff meeting with the city manager, we'll try to hash some of those things out. Like, who does need to be involved? What are exactly are we looking to do? I know she wants the focus to be on the library, but as we've said, I don't think you can really talk about this building without at least taking some of the um, senior center activity into account. And that's another fundraising source. You know, if the, sure. if the Senior Center Foundation is part of this process, um, you know, so I, I think that, you know, it's really the council's direction and the city manager talking to and knowing what the council wants. And obviously if we take somebody to council and, um, and they're on the dais, they can give us direction, but we're gonna have a conversation in August. And then I'll be able to. Sean, I think I think we lost connection on something. No, maybe I nudged something. It's okay. Yeah. It's on. Why do you say that? The, 
Remind me again, um, Alhambra with Mike Fong. Is it a community center? That's yes. the 25 million. That's a, commu a community. Center. So a community center is what what does that entail? Like, like a, a community services department, parks and recreation. And that's all that that's going to encompass in that building at yeah. Alhambra. Mm -hmm. They have so a newer like, library, their library. Well, where's their senior center? Um oh I think I think that it includes senior stuff. So it's in the community center. So seniors, oh, okay. team, so, camp. Yeah you know, classes. Yeah. It's a traditional, it's what, you know, it's it's a combination of our senior center and our Orange Grove rec center, but in one building is my understanding. I think that it's not, they haven't defined it exactly yet, but then in reading the articles I read online, you know, it's a kind of a, a community center. It's not to do with the library. Kathy, do you know how they got the 20? So they haven't, so do they have a plan for it? And how did, what, like, I'm like curious yeah, where, about the timing the of the money. Yeah. Like, do, you, do we need the, the plan control? to get the money or can we get the money simultaneously? With he the handed them a check. He I handed know. them a check, but and I did look at that because they <laughs> yeah. don't have like a solid really? plan. Oh my gosh. I expected they, that they had like the shovel ready. I didn't think that's my memory when I read the articles and I can double check it and, and let you know via email. But my memory is that I was surprised thinking, oh, well, I thought they would have to have, yeah. you know, like build documents, you know, really like ready to go. But they did not. If it's not At too much to ask of staff, if you could look into that so yeah. that we can determine uh, in conjunction with city council and the uh, city manager when we go knocking on doors. Yeah, and I think that we can, um, there are other systems that in the last couple of years have gotten earmarks from the state for their libraries, county libraries have. And um, Janet facilitated an opportunity for me to um, talk to the director at Pasadena Public Library, and they got ten million. Yeah, but for their for their because of their um, it, retro, yeah, their seismic retrofit. So it's a little different. But asking them, like, how did that come about? Did you who did you ask? Did you go do it through your representative? Did you contact you know? So I think there's a number of libraries that have gotten money from the state or cities like Alhambra that got money for something similar that we can kind of prod on that. Sierra well. Madre got 10 million last year from yeah. for their yeah. library. Yeah. And I, yeah, I kind of was like, hello. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, think, I think we have an excellent opportunity to investigate scope, whether, you know, I don't want to uh, try to ramrod through this idea of it being a, a combined civic center. I just think that it makes sense since we literally share a wall with the senior center that and if you're going to have library and senior center and the community room sharing walls together, it wouldn't be a, a leap to, we, as Sally pointed out, the team center within our library is inadequate. We have funding already earmarked specifically for, uh, through the request, for improving the, uh, the children's area. Sorry, I keep kicking you, Annie. Um, uh, that if we combine all of these together, it just sort of waves its hand around saying civic center. Yeah, I think that it's, there is a lot of opportunity in my mind for um, co-programming, you know, like you talked about, we'll advertise uh, the great courses at the senior center. We are so siloed from them. Um, they are doing their thing. They are, some of them are library users as well, but there is very little crossover and even the teen stuff. So they, community services used to have a, like an after school teen drop in down at the rec center. Mm -hmm. They moved it into the senior center. They've now discontinued it because it wasn't successful. But, and meanwhile, we're here with 25 teens mm -hmm. in our room. And at the same time, they've got a different kind of setup over there for, for not studying, but for just keeping them busy after school. So how those things work together, um, it seems like there's a lot of opportunity there to think about spaces and the use of spaces and whether there's, some overlap. It's very exciting. Yeah. Very exciting opportunities, uh, which brings us back to what we started this discussion with. And I want to stop uh, you know, uh, leaving it too much, but um, looking into not just libraries, but uh, civic centers and community centers and uh, you know that have combined with a library on their footprint, I think would be excellent for us to look at so that we can start to gauge some of that scope and then create our tent, so to speak, with all stakeholders. Was there, I forget, was there a time limit on using or starting to use the request money? Don't think so. Okay, I know there I was think some. We just have to, we just have to, 
be intentioning to do so. Because there was a contingency where we if we use it. don't use it, but I don't believe I, actually I, I know I read the, I read the, oh, okay. the will. Um, there is no time frame. It's just if we don't use it, it goes to them. Yeah, okay. I think as long as we're demonstrating the intent and clearly thinking about a plan for using it, it which is subject to interpretation. If them really wants the money. I, I don't think they can. I mean, it's not enough money that they want to get into a battle with a library yeah, it over, look very over good a kids them. center. Yeah. Um, but you know, you never know. I mean, the, the American Loan Association is well funded. I think. Mean, do you want us at this meeting today to come up with a list of ideas of places to visit? Or not? If you have any, I can jot them down. If I you, think we said, didn't we? I took some, I think. Al 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 some. I, you know, I mean, uh, what's nice about Altadena is that they've got a historical building and mm -hmm. they're reusing, you know, repurposing their historical building. Um, yeah, it's, you know, Monrovia. Didn't right. Monrovia a couple of years ago get remodeled? Not sure. Yeah. I Whittier have, is one that I have is, a large just remodeled. Now, guys, to see Whittier. Whittier, yes. I guess we should go to Monday because they also have a more intriguing kind of area. What do you mean? It's actually mm -hmm. bigger than ours. And of course, you know, San Marino. I mean, but, but, but most of us have been to the San Marino Library, so. No. Uh, yeah. I would, I'd Nobody's like to get a sense leaving. of people's ideal timing. Like, do would you want to do this on a, on a Saturday? Would you, can we do it during the week? Are, are people available? I mean, I know a lot of you are working during the week, so. I have an extraordinarily flexible situation because I, I work for myself. Ed, I know you work for yourself. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Though. No, I can kind of do it whenever. So yeah, I'm pretty flexible. And, and I think if we can get, have access to the uh, city vans and carports, yeah, I could find out about that. that. So that's yeah. I mean, if we can schedule two months in advance for the date. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay, I'll start working on that. It'd be wonderful if we could start uh, doing those yeah. maybe as early September, as September, October. October. Yeah. There's something along like Foothill. I don't know if it's Azusa or Glendora, but uh, I think. Glendora, I think, is kind of like us, pretty old and yeah. 80s, dark. Yeah. Um, but Azusa, I've been to, and it's very light inside, but I don't know how new it is. I'll have to, I'll have to look that up. I think you kind of hit it on the head just there, um, Kathy. This building, it, it, it is dark and heavy, and it would be really lovely to have something that was light, open, and, and felt more uh, inviting to come into and stay in. Mm -hmm. You know, we should go to Glendale Central Library. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah, I'm thinking Glendale. You know, it's much yeah. bigger, so different from us, but kind of some nice features that mm -hmm. we can is, take is there, um, Are there any under construction currently? that are reasonably nearby. Well, I don't know what stage Sierra Madre is is at. I, I have to ask. I, I'm going to reach out to the directors to get some suggestions about, because like I know county libraries, you know, there's a relatively new county library up in um, like La Crescenta, La Canada. Um, so yeah, I, I need to reach out to the other directors and try to get some suggestions about what's happening. But I don't know off the top of my head who's if anybody's under construction right now. I just thought it might be interesting to see it as they're in process that they oh why didn't we or God why did we you know kind right. of considerations. It'd be great to go when there's a lot of folks there too, like their busiest time for me. Like I'd really like to see mm -hmm. when youth are there, when seniors are there, you know, just like how people are using the library. Yeah. Rather than when it's empty. Yeah. When it, when is their after school time? Yeah. Usually. Yeah, so like so three, yeah. four in the afternoon. Probably in the peak traffic. Yeah. I also think um, you know, when you say that there's people who say, oh no, don't change. I mean, you know, the library. It's also not just the dark and the kind of 80s, but it's falling apart. I mean, so. Oh, no, that's. So, that's so how much do we invest as a city in sort of crumbling, not crumbling, but a, a building that's needing a major, it really does need a major overhaul. So you either major invest in an old building that's having issues. Or you look at something. Different. Yeah, it's it's the difference between having a you know custom car 
that is incredibly valuable but needs a lot of love every you know so often to keep it on the road and just that keep that you drive around in well yeah and it's it's and it's not energy efficient but but i i think you know going back to dean's point and maybe this kind of uh you know slides into the other point is i think if you educate the people because i think some of those people that are resistant they think this is historical they do i really mm -hmm. think people think this is historical and they're very uh they're very surprised when we, we remind people that this was built in the 80s yeah i honestly when i um first understood that this room existed i know i take that back i came into this room when i first moved into town but um when i first came to the library board of trustees i came on behalf of another organization in the town that was interested in putting a mural on the building um and was told you can't do that because it's a historic building and what i was told is only the front and I was told that by the librarian and the library board of trustees that the front was historic, but this this wall was the only wall that was not historic. So there's uh, been a long history of people not understanding that. So that's an excellent point, Jenna. Thank you for raising it. I mean, I think that um, ultimately we will have some kind of communication piece that kind of talks about this so that these facts, what we're trying to accomplish with this, why we're doing it. I mean, that would all be something that we would all have a reference point. It's not like we just have to keep it all in the, our minds and remember and talk about it. Right now, we don't have that. So now you're just talking to people to kind of get people excited. But eventually, um, we'll have something that's a reference point a for all of us. A lovely infographic. Yeah. You know. Really, uh, understandable would be excellent. But that, I think we're easily a year from that. Yeah. And I, I just my experience from when we renovated and restored Brand Library in Glendale, I can't tell you how many people were like, oh, it's, don't do it. It's horrible. And I mean, that place, this place needed it. I mean, it was incredibly um, run down. And it's now this incredibly beautiful, historically restored building. But even some people still don't like it. They like the old you're always going to find those people change. Yeah, always some people just for, can't, for some people. can't get on board. Yeah. And the other thing I just want to mention is, is um, when we and, and when we get into the deeper, but we're going to have a big housing increase mm -hmm. over the next. Right. That's a given. Eight years. So mm -hmm. there's going to be more demands and we just have to build the appropriate size. Right. That's right. What Civic Center Library. Right? Again, it's too bad there isn't some property nearby that we can expand <laughs> this uh, uh, concept into. Did you play the lottery? I do not play the lottery. Um, Any? Do you have any? I, I, I feel like. Oh, no. no. I was just going to emphasize your point around energy efficiency. I feel like once it comes to communication, yeah. like you yeah. say, what the carbon footprint is of mm -hmm. this current building, mm -hmm. what it could be, mm -hmm. like, would be a huge selling point for many right. people, I feel like. And maybe some infrastructure dollars too, all the federal funds coming out right, around greenhouse gas, greenhouse gas reductions. Right, that there might be so, you know, there might be federal funding too. But it's a urban forest on the roof kind of thing. <laughs> maybe not. Yeah, for sure. I know. I mean, yeah. Well, I, mean, I think all the things. Solar and then with backup, backup, there's a strong on backup batteries. You know, yeah. public spaces to be more energy efficient. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I think we've got uh, the, there's a, a plethora of possibility. Uh, however, the, the question of finding the scope that works without becoming too ambitious, uh, because at some point we also, regardless of pots that we can look to from government to give us some funding, we're going to get to go to the community. And if, if, if we're telling them we need to raise $40 million, uh, that could be challenging to as a scale. Um, however, if we say, well, it's 40, 40, I'm making up a number, $40 million, but we've got 10 from here and three from here and five from here, so it's not as much. I think that that's going to be a, a great part of our message. So understanding the scope, but I, I really am I'm terribly excited about the idea of expanding even just the library into what we saw in the um, the strategic plan, people asking for library of things, a library that has uh, community space, training space, uh, and and all these other things that people are looking for from 
their little central library uh, yeah. that we can expand into yeah. for the next again next 50 years. Okay, so in, in August, I will um, come back to you with maybe some suggested and pre, you know, I'll start talking to some people and come back with some suggested dates and, and locations for us to visit. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we kind of gone hand in hand with our third uh, point. Um, uh, as I raised before, they, they go hand in hand with each other. Um, library operations update. Um, I don't have much. I thought that I printed out. Well, I was gonna give you an update on summer reading program, but I don't see my piece of paper, but I can give it from memory. Um, I think we have more than 1800 people signed up. Um, and I know that at Wednesday's wonderful Wednesday, which we had inside because it was warm, we had 170 people. Oh, wow. So we've had really good turnout. Oh, for, oh what's that? In the community? Yeah, in the community room. Mm -hmm. So what we've had the capacity. In um, it it's 380 seated and 300 or something standing yeah. or something like that. It's on the wall. Um, so, you know, been, it's been very successful. Um, the teens, we've got about 60 teen volunteers who've been, you know, working really hard and, and, um, you know, getting their skills up to speed. We talked about that they can't alphabetize. So we're working on helping them learn how to alphabetize. Um, oh, that's sad. yeah, I know it's that's hard really to even, sad. you know, Maida said, you know, we, we used dictionaries differently. Yeah. We used encyclopedia, you know, we, yeah. we looked things up in that order and they're just, they just don't do it. Um, so summer reading program is going really well. I think we have one more wonderful Wednesday and then it ends at the end of July. And, um, we're working on our acquisitions module for the integrated library system and hoping to start actively using it and ordering for the fiscal year in August. So right now we're not really placing orders. We're sort of storing up our carts and hopefully we'll place them through this new acquisition system in August. Um, we are still getting like popular new fiction and just processing it ourselves in a different kind of workflow to make sure that that stuff gets out on the shelves. But a, a number of things we're waiting to order until uh, the acquisitions module is functioning. Um, next week at the city council meeting, there's an item on the consent agenda for our CRC Dynex contract, which is our integrated library system. We're looking at a five-year agreement with them. Um, and with the option of extending for two additional one-year periods, um, if we choose to do that. The only real difference, uh, it's all the same products that we already have. The one change that we are adding is some consulting, prepaid consulting services um, so that they can help us now that we have uh, Jenny Reyes in the support services librarian position, um, they can kind of help us get a number of projects going and jumpstart. So that's exciting for us because <laughs> we've never budgeted for that before. I mean, sometimes we've been able to find the money during the year for a specific project that we need consulting expertise with, but to have it um, built in is, is really nice. We get a, a set number of hours and we get uh, monthly and quarterly check-ins and meetings with consultants um, and we get discounts on training and things like that. So um, that's a nice package that we're adding. So that's important. We'll get that done. Um, and that's really all that I have. You know, we're just uh, busy all the time with summer summer reading and we're down a librarian, which that posting, um, we're working on getting the children's librarian recruitment going. Um, I just spoke today to the management services director about it to find out where we were with that. So that should be happening pretty soon, um, the next week or so, I think. Um, and we actually are bringing on, uh, we had done a recruitment for um, a part-time uh, administrative clerk in the admin office to help Sean and myself. Um, and we actually are uh, promoting um, an internal candidate from an aid position to that position. He's um, He works at Pasadena Public Library also, and he works here with us and he's been with us for a number of years, four years maybe. Something like that. So he'll be starting um, in his new role at the end of July. Wonderful. Excellent as always. Um, uh, board President Communications. Uh, 
couple of things. Um, I don't know if it's appropriate to ask about this, but so we are in the middle of a park. Uh, and I know that the park is uh, heavily used, uh, which is wonderful. Um, would it be possible to maybe have someone appropriate from Parks and Recs to come and, and just talk with us sometime about the park sure. aspect of it? What what exactly would you want don't know. to know? Okay. Just would like to know what they think about the outside of this, you know, block that's a park. Okay. And what they what they're doing, what their plans are, what their hopes are, what you know, especially if we're looking at uh, and the other part of my comment is that I'm very excited about the opportunity to, to start looking into scope uh, and scale uh, for the library and possibly Civic Center. Uh, that would entail the park as well being part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it might be nice to at least just make that uh, connection with uh, the other appropriate uh, parties in town that uh, are involved in the management of the park. Yeah, interestingly, I my experience since I've been here is that they think of it as the library's park. They don't do programming in this park. They don't do any classes in this park. You know, they just don't do anything in this park. Um, but of course, it's, you know, it's under their purview. They maintain it and they, you know, keep it cleanish and, um, you know, do the landscaping and That's stuff. That's what I'm more interested in. Yeah. I, obviously, there's, there's a, a WIC issue uh, to doing programming and whatnot. But we, there have been programs uh, that I've seen over the years, job fairs and, and things like that. That's true. I mean, yes, they do. They do the senior health fair mm -hmm. on the front lawn. So it would, do it, it would just be nice to, to have like a, a, a understanding of their game plan for the next maybe 18 months with what they're, they're going to do in the park, if there's going to be any updating uh, facilities management issues, things like that, just just so we're aware. What What is uh, what is the footprint? I mean, could... We've asked that many times. I, mean, I, mean, I, don't, think I don't think we've ever asked that. I mean, so if we were to expand, you know, can we expand? <clears throat> can we expand? I mean, what... I, I don't... Yeah, I mean, again, the master plan would identify yeah. all of those possibilities. Um, I'm assuming that there are there's places that we can expand. I mean, I think the I think the biggest issue we're going to have is that it's residential on those mm -hmm. sides, and people are not going to want a gigantic looming building right up to the sidewalk. You know, so. But again, I think that this is part of the master planning process to identify mm -hmm. what is what could the footprint be. What do you mm -hmm. think is reasonable? What what is normal? What's expected? Whatever. You know, that's for you know, maybe some experts too, they would weigh in on that. I like going up and going down. I think that's the only way to increase our footprint. Yeah, substantially. Well, I think also, you know, this big atrium would a lot of space there. So, you know, if that were designed differently. Um, I mean, if we did it, I don't know, are we, is it an open conversation with the comments? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm going to, well, I'll hand it over to uh, a board members. I usually go to Bianca, but I mean, here. just in response, like, we're going to, if we do this, we're going to have a community engagement plan. Like, we'd have to talk to all the people, you know, it's like, right. I just think that question's more for the people who live here on what's appropriate and feel up. Right. Yeah. Right. That wasn't good. And that's part of the master plan. That's part of their job is to do all that. That's about community. getting the tent together. Uh, who's, who's going to be under the tent? Yeah, but also along with that, you, you could, I mean, we're not, it's not stuck in, you know, cement that the orientation of the building is like this. We you could That's an orient the building. Yeah. You know? I think, I, like I said, I think the only thing that my understanding is, is that at least three walls have to stay in place and not move. Although there's a question, I guess that's a question is, could we, could we lift them up and move them? Could they be filled? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's been done. I mean, the, the parcel must have, I mean, a defined dimension and you're allowed to build on a certain percentage of the square footage. So who knows how many parcels this might be here? Yeah, that's, I, as Kathy said, I think that's the master site plan will, will tell us we asked this question before, I forget if you were on the board, when we were looking at the issues regarding the unhoused 
Um, and the complaints that people were saying that the library isn't managing that. And there's a question of, well, where can we, where, where does our remit end? And where does the city uh, you know, take over in terms of parks and rec? So, but are there certain, do rules change when it's a uh, city property as opposed to a residential? You know, like residential, you have somebody, you know, the, the, yeah, the, the bar, yeah. you know, but is that with the governmental building? Don't That's know. why you we, hire architects and engineers yeah. and- they, they look up all that yeah. stuff and tell us. The city can grant its own variance, right? <laughs> well, there's, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking kind of out loud, maybe. Um, but, you know, the specific plan is about to come out uh, for this area, right? Mm -hmm. But um, but I would think the city could probably would it want to. Do. Um, Within reason, sure. Politically expedient, probably. Yeah. You know, they wouldn't want to do something crazy. Oh, let me put it. Let me. <laughs> but yeah, I think that would. I think the site plan is going to be critical, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, excellent. Um, my comment was going to be so does the new children's librarian, does that mean Judy is leaving? Yeah, Judy uh, resigned. So she's no longer with us. Is there anything specific that would can publicly be? No. Okay. No. Well, I thank her for your communication. Everyone loved her so much and all the work she did. During COVID, this time, yeah, so that's good. Just wanted to make sure to express that to the staff, like whoever comes in, it's big shoes to fill for her. So yeah, that's all I want to share. Thank you. Thank you. If I am able to. Um, yeah. 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 Okay, kind of jump over to you. Well, I just want to say the the city. Thank you for our T-shirts. They're very oh, and and those uh magnet uh, name tags. Um, I've already misplaced mine, so I just have to get a magnet to find it in my house somewhere. Um, but the commissioner of Congress, it was nice. Um, I, I mean, it, it was nice, but I, I just, um, I'm one of these kind of people. I just think for the amount of energy and the food and the cost, I don't think it was very well attended. So. It, maybe the city needs to rethink that because it was um, it's a lot of work and there was an awful lot of food. And there's a <laughs> lot of food, you know, you know, and then the cost of the t-shirts, the name tags. So I don't, you know, yeah. Hmm. But it was nice. It was nice. And thank you. I'd like to thank uh, everyone who came up. We, I think we were the uh, percentage wise the, the best uh, attended uh, commission. Very possible. Yeah. There were a couple that had only one person. There were a lot of, I mean, I think, um, I don't think we've always done it in the summer. There were a lot of people traveling. Yeah. They knew yeah. that people weren't, you know, people are at CP, no, I'm out of town, I'm out of town. So I, the last I heard is that the thinking is maybe we don't do it every year. Every other yeah. year. Yeah. 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 Ed? Well, I actually have comments about the uh, Commissioner of Congress also. This is the little, program or whatever. Mm -hmm. And there's a list in here of all of the members of all of the commissions. Now, it's rather shocked to realize that I don't know a single person <laughs> besides the ones that are on this, this commission. But uh, one of the other things that occurred is that probably six, eight people came up to me, city employees, and introduced themselves. I have no idea. They, you know, they didn't say I'm with public works, I'm with city management office, whatever. It, it was, they needed something just as detailed oh, that's about nice. the who's yeah. who. Who's the city? Who is the city? Mm -hmm. um, I know one department head in this city and it is Kathy Billings. Mm -hmm. You know, this would have been a great opportunity for the city to introduce all of the different department heads the city manager's office and the hierarchy of the office. And I think it was unfortunate that we didn't have some of that provided to us. I will um, share that feedback. Yeah, they did They did introduce uh, this, some of the, the people who were there and working, but there wasn't, uh, uh, obviously it's on the website, uh, but it would have been, you're, it's an excellent point that share the point of the commissions is to advise and counsel the city so it would have been nice for us to also see who those people are yeah excellent thing. so um that's it well thank you uh i believe that next would be the uh
council liaison. Yeah, I don't have a lot of comments. Just I love the feedback on the commissioner's congress. I I, I know in the past, I think that's a rel it's a relatively new thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and we used to have commissions come and report to the city council. Mm -hmm. I know I did it when I was on the right. public safety commission and the planning commission. But anyway, so any more feedback you have on that, I think is super helpful. But I also mm -hmm. would like to comment about the city staff. We have a lot of new city staff. I mean, yes. I think I we have eighty seven hires in two years. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a lot. Of we need an, like an online directory with photos mm -hmm. and names. And I, yeah. I, you know, it's something that I think is. Uh, and that's a great idea. People know we need it, but it's, you know, just not at the top of the priority list. But yeah, even true. internally. I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I yeah. don't know people. I go to City Hall. And, yeah, that's that a, I think that's a really well, good yeah, It would be nice if we could do like at the. Uh, the, the commissioner of Congress when they have them or something like that is is you, you socializing more. I mean, when you're you know you you, you know the the tables are this artificial boundary. Everybody sits and then the socializing stops when you go get your food and then you sit. So it's kind of like uh, there's you know it kind of longer longer. Yeah. So maybe show. you do like a cocktail kind of party with chairs and that people sit in theater style yeah them. and then if we had, like had our name tags you could you know go and and talk to people mm -hmm. and uh you know yeah yeah it's interesting it's kind of like what is the objective of the commissioners conference yeah. to me i think it was i think it was initially to sort of thank the commissions and so it feels like a, you know a thank you and then like but then you also are, it's sort of a mixed bag because then you're having everybody come and talk about their plan and what they've done so it it, maybe it, we need a better, I, better objective. Um, if it's social, I think that's great. Yeah, thank you. And I think I think my memory is when we first started doing it that commissioners did appreciate learning about what mm -hmm. the other yeah. commissions were doing because sure. we're all in our own thing and to go, oh my gosh, the planning commission did all that. I had no idea, you know. So I think that that's a piece of it that became, if it was originally, let's thank them. That became apparent that that was of interest to people to yeah. kind of get a little overview of what are the other commissions, you know, doing. It, so, it's, yeah. a, it's a, a, a wonky structure because as Bianca pointed out, there's a little bit of time for communal conversation. Mm -hmm. Then we sit down and eat, and then there's the presentations by com committee uh, or by commission. And but then there's no opportunity to after you've mm -hmm. heard who's on what and what they did and what they're doing mm -hmm. to then go and have that uh, conversation okay. after. So, so maybe it needs to be thought through. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's very helpful. And again, I think I just think the site the master site plan is going to be great, and I'm very excited. And thank you for being the ambassadors. I appreciate your support and getting in front of council. Uh, Oddly enough, now we have our friends of the library represented Hibs. It's such a popular meeting that that would send two people from the table. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Karen. I'm Seth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm the vice president of Endowment Center of Memorials. I'm also the chair, co chair of the bookstore. And I'm fairly new. I'm Melissa Wilson. I'm the uh, CFO of Google. I have Alan's report. Shall I just read it? Yes, yeah, please. As she voted. Okay. Um, out of town. This month has been fairly quiet for the friends. When we will not be meeting as a board in July, we'll hold our annual retreat in August. Prior to the August retreat, a bylaws committee will meet to review our bylaws and policies. We had four new members in June for a total of $335. Year to date, we have 144 members. For a total of $14,290. So this rate of donation is slower than last year. We will be sending out renewal reminders this month. Please renew your memberships and spread the word about the wonderful library program that friends support. For the bookstore, it's been running smoothly and uh, currently investigating the idea of selling some of the more expensive books on, our, on eBay. Our CFO, Melissa, is in the process of uh, Opening a bank account that will uh, facilitate the eBay sales. For restoration concerts, the 2023 24 season series tickets are now available online to purchase. The price is now $136 for eight concerts, and it's available on the Friends website. 
the restoration concert committee is still trying to sell the Steinway piano and has had one offer of $19,000. And the committee is increasing donor levels for the new season. A $5,000 level has been added in hopes of generating increased donations. And communications, the newsletter, is scheduled to go out on the fifth of each month. It was a little late this month due to the passing of Roseanne's father-in-law. But this very good open rate of 58.1%. We had 39 clicks, 23 for the bookstore, five for membership, five for restoration concert, three for summer reading program, and the rest for the friends home page. I uh, hope you're all receiving the newsletter and let Ellen know if you are not. And articles are always welcome if anybody wants to submit. It'd be nice to have a trustee article uh, submitted at some point. It'd be great. Uh, it's a monthly newsletter. And we're on Instagram as well. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any uh, library director communications? I did want to mention that the general plan draft is on the city's website. If you want to review it, I will let you know that the changes that I had requested um, didn't get in there yet. So I'm working on that with uh, community development. So we'll make sure that those changes get in there. I think you remember me maybe telling you that the library was not very well represented, nothing about a new building, you know, nothing about facility and these needs. Um, so that is in now. So those things are are in and documented. Um, but there's some other little things that I think um, I would like to see corrected. And so I'm going to work on that. But if you want to take a look at it and give any feedback there, I, I forget when the it's soon because I think they have to file it by like September or something. So the deadline for feedback is soon. The downtown specific plan, I think, is that draft will be released, I think, next week. Also, short turnaround for the public to review it. Um, and I'll be reviewing that too to make sure the changes that um, I had requested back in 2021 and 2022 made it in. So we'll just make sure it's all good for the library. Well, thank you. Uh, do we want to hear from the trustee liaison to the friends? I, I did skip that. I apologize. Yeah, I was not able to attend the last <laughs> meeting. So no, no. I think. I, I get to put my glasses on every time I look down at the agenda. <laughs> I apologize for that. Yeah. Um, Unless anyone has anything else, I, I'm going to call for adjournment. It was a, a light agenda. Give me uh, one moment. We'll be busy next month. Really excited to know about that. Okay, I am calling it. Thank you.